Hello, my name is Furkan Güç. I'm a PhD candidate from University of California, Merced. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper, Ball Bearing Fault Diagnosis with Physics Informed Transfer Learning. So my outline starts with the motivation and the introduction, and I will deliver the overall workflow of our proposed methodology. Then go into the details of the dynamic mode decomposition with control, which is the main methodology that we used in our paper. And then I will deliver the results of the fault code assignment with image classification on the ball bearing data set. And I will end up with discussion and conclusion. So our purpose is the data-driven fault diagnosis, which can be considered as the special subpart of blind source separation. In the example, we use the different aspects of signal processing. So the one of the main examples in this status is the cocktail party problem. In a cocktail party, there are different instruments coming into one source, which is the mixed signal in the sound wave. But if you are able to separate the three different instruments, you will be able to deliver the cause assignment. So our workflow of the study starts with the, what we have, which is the labeled input output data streams that I will share the details of the famous ball bearing data set from the literature. And with the aid of the dynamic mode decomposition with control, the MDC, we will extract the dynamic mode characteristics from the input output data without any requirement of the system model or underlying physics. And then we will generate the time frequency representation images using DMDC modes. And with the final step using the deep convolutional neural networks, we will apply image classification algorithms for fault diagnosis. And at the end, what we achieve is a compact methodology to achieve fault diagnosis for a given data set. So let's start with the input output data. We are going to use one of the famous data sets in the literature, which is the ball bearing data from the Case Western Research University. This test bench for motor performance assessment consists of a setup, including the motor, torque transducer, dynamometer, and the control electronics. And this test bearing supports with the motor shaft and special defects were introduced at a single point EDM machining located in one of the three parts of the bearing, which is the ball, inner race, and the outer race. And for each cases, there are three accelerometers installed in three different positions on the system, which are the drive end, fun end, and the base. And this data is consists of one horsepower load applied to the motor, shaft rotating with speed of 1772 RPM, and we have a 48 kilohertz of sampling frequency. So then this data is processed with the dynamic mode decomposition. The idea of the dynamic mode decomposition is to obtain the linear reduced order models or the modes patterns of the data that is dominating the observed measurement. So DMD essentially gives the coupled system of spatial temporal modes. It starts in the fluid community, then the nonlinear dynamic system, and then extends the broad range of systems, including the disease modeling, neuroscience, robotics, and finance. It is purely data-driven method. It doesn't require any knowledge, any physics, any model of the system, and it can work anytime when you have the data. You can essentially feed the data into the DMD, and you can get the spatial temporal modes and dynamic system of the system. One of the examples is the famous fluid flow passing cylinder. You can consider the each time step image as one of the uh, data points. And these data points are reshaped into tall column vectors, which is consistent to X matrix. If you think about the X prime, it is the exact same matrix, but it went one step time into the future. What DMD is doing is that it tries to find the best fit for the linear operator A that advances X to the X prime. 
in reality, these matrices are can be very huge matrices, tall matrices in general. And instead of working with the whole tall matrices, what DMD does is approximates the dominant eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uses only the most dominant modes to cover the most of the dynamics of the system. Eigenvectors corresponds to the spatial uh, domain characteristics, which is the flow characteristics of this example. And eigenvalues corresponds to the coherent time dynamics that can be considered as the pure tone sinusoidal waves or exponential decay or growth or any combinations of these. So if you think about it step by step, what it does is that we compute the SVD of the matrix X to find the dominant structures and we organize hierarchically and we substitute the X into the X prime then find the approximation of A by taking the pseudo inverse of U and B matrices. And we compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in this. Once we have the control signal included in the system, then it's not only X prime equals A times X, but we need to include the B times U where the input signal U is introduced to the system in the same node. With the same uh, I'd almost identical procedure to the DMD. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be extracted as the growth, decay, oscillations, time characteristics, and spatial correlations between the measurements. So using the idea of the dynamic mode decomposition with control, we extracted the first dominant modes, first six dominant modes of the ball bearing data characteristics. On the left-hand side, what you can see is the time domain modes and eigenvalues, corresponding eigenvalues of these modes into the system. Once we are selecting these six values, what we do is we use the singular values of the system. If you see the hierarchical order singular value set, you can see that the first six values corresponds to the more than 60% of the energy that is corresponding to the these six modes and eigenvalues. Once we obtain these dynamic mode decomposition with control modes, we convert them into an image representation using the continuous wavelet transfer. Once we transform, transform these modes into the images, what you can see is that different labels correspond to different characteristics in the figures. Even a human eye can visually see the difference between the different fault characteristics. So if a human eye can differentiate in between these two, an image classification algorithm can do a great job on this. So after converting everything into the image representations, we applied the transfer learning. Instead of training an image classification algorithm from scratch, we use the famous Google Net algorithm to use the idea of the transfer learning. We split our data into training and test data randomly and apply this uh, algorithm to train first on the training data and study on the test data. This also shows that we have 95% accuracy on the training data and 89% accuracy on the test data. So the conclusion and the future work includes that a data-driven method of fault diagnosis is expressed in the system dynamics is extracted with DMDC, and physics-informed transfer learning is applied using the DMDC modes. We converted those DMDC modes into the image representations, and those image representations utilized in the transfer learning with the Google Net. And future works of the study includes extending this to different fault scenarios. Thank you for listening.